We are here in the year 2022. The Great Reset initiatives are being implemented right now. True, incredible scenes are shaping up on planet Earth, but what and why? Is there a historical record of events describing our planet's present economic and catastrophic scenes, climaxing with a new world order? Governments and citizens alike are asking the same questions. What in the world is going on? Be one of many to make sure you are aware and protected with the upcoming series, Signs of the Times. Signs of the Times will take place under the tent at TN Tatum Field from July 9th to July 23rd, except Thursdays. Admission, study materials, children's program, health screenings and lectures are all free. For more information, visit our website, signsofthetimesbda.org. Good evening and welcome to our midweek prayer meeting. It's Wednesday and God has blessed us to be here so that we can worship him in spirit and in truth. How many of you are happy to be here? Amen. Amen. If it wasn't for the grace of God, we may not have been here. We would not have been here because he woke us up this morning and he kept us until this time to be here. So let us worship him in thanksgiving and honor. Okay, let us pray. Gracious God, our Father in heaven, it is truly 
your grace, by your grace that we are here. You who are the giver and sustainer of life, Lord, and without you, we could not be here. So we thank you, Lord, that the breath that you have breathed into us, you continue to sustain it. And so we come into your presence for to worship you in songs, in reading of your word, in testimony and exaltation. We pray that your Holy Spirit will anoint each person represented here, each person serving you on this platform this evening, and all those who will be listening on the various internet platforms, welcome to them and bless them, Lord, we pray in your precious name, Jesus. Amen. At this time, we want to send uh, birthday greetings to just a couple of people, a couple of our members who are celebrating birthdays today. Brother Leonardo Balaru. Brother Leonardo Balaru, happy birthday to you. Also, happy birthday to Brother Dennis Joel. Brother Dennis Joel. Amen. We pray that the Lord will bless them with many, many more birthdays. And at this time, we are going to go straight into our testimony service. Our testimony services. Is anyone here that has a testimony because the Lord is good to you, because the Lord has given you an experience? And I see Hilda Smith coming. <laughs> Praise God, and I see Brother Bobby standing. Come on, Brother Smith, Ellis Smith. I definitely have a testimony. Good evening, everybody. Because uh, just this week, I became a grandfather. Praise God, amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. I can tell you it was some years ago, maybe 12 years ago, whatever, I think it was around that many years ago, I didn't think that I would be here to see that day happen. And by the grace of God, God has allowed me to live long enough yes. to see my first grandchild born. Yes. And I got to meet my grandchild, Ava Imani Serenity Smith. All today, right. Amen. <laughs> Ava. I got to meet her today, so I'm grateful. I want to praise God and thank God. So all of you out there who are grandparents, now I understand. <laughs> now I understand. Amen. 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 Brother Bobby, are you coming? Yes, Brother Goins. I don't have anything particular to testify about, but I just thank God for life and the opportunity to be here tonight. You know, I've been wanting to come to prayer meeting. It seems like it's been a, several years I have been at a prayer meeting. But, you know, I've been convicted to get back out to prayer meeting, man. get back to church. Like, you know, I mean, I continue to commit my life to Christ every day. And, throughout the day, you know, and seeing like the enemy is just on our backs, man, you know? Mm -hmm. But I just thank God the word says that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and, and by, by the word, the word of, our of our testimony. Like, Amen. You know, I just thank God, you know, because we're living in a time we look around and um, prophecy has just been fulfilling itself, man. Mm -hmm. And it seems like we as believers are taking this thing so lightly, you know, including myself. But I just thank God that I could stand here and testify of his goodness over my life. Because who knows, I probably might not have been here <laughs> if it wasn't for his goodness. And just being going to a few funerals of people that's been close to me here lately, it makes you more thankful, you know, Amen. that we are blessed, you know, to be here. So I just want to testify and be encouraged by the brethren. And it's good to see all you guys. And I just want to let you know that I'm still walking the path. You don't see me, but I'm still doing the Lord's work. Amen. You know, I don't have to be here. You know, the, the, the house of God's right here. So I just testify wherever I go. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Praise God for Brother Bobby's testimony indeed. You know, I... Sister Tucker looked like she want, was going to get up, but you can still come. 
you know, I, I, I have a testimony too for um, thankfulness to the Lord. Thankfulness to the Lord because a lot of things have happened in my family over the last several months. I've lost several members of my family. And it's like the second time that I expect my dad to die and it did not happen. You know, just like three weeks ago, he was in the, at home and waited for the doctor to call and go to visit him at home. And my sister called and said that it's not looking good. Right. And a couple of days after that, my, one of my brother from New York called and said, well, you know, your brother is in the hospital. So I hesitated. I said, okay, which one of them? There are nine of us brothers. Right. But then he said, after that, he said his name and said, well, he's not in the hospital, in the, he's in the hospice. We had not known that he was ill. Anyway, that the following day he was dead. And my dad, our dad, not only lived, but he lived. The doctor visited him. He was able to get up and walk again and celebrated his 102 second birthday. So that's what I'm giving thanks for. 102 years trying to get caught up with his sister. I don't think he will catch her. But God has blessed him tremendously with longevity of years. I pray that I don't have to wait that long for the Lord to come. <laughs> Honestly. This, this world is turbulent and, you know, to continue living like this is probably going to get, you know, as bad as the lesson that we have this week where uh, the angel had to go and escort a lot out of Sodom. Mm -hmm. That's how bad things got. And I do not think that we are very far from that point. I think we might even be worse. So our prayer is and our objective should be that we live our life, live our lives to the glory of God so that if he should come tomorrow, right, we will, can all go home with him. Amen? Amen. Sister Tucker. On Sunday, the Wilson family celebrated, perhaps for the almost 40th time, meeting together as ladies, as first cousins, and three generations were represented there. Um, a lady there was 102. Um, my first cousin's wife in her 70s, a lot of them were in their 70s. A few of us in our 60s, a um, few in the 30s. Um, and I'm grateful, maybe one in the 20s, I think one was in the 20s. But I'm grateful that we are all there to experience um, the fellowship as Wilson women. Um, and I'm just grateful that the Lord bless us to see each other in the land of the living. Amen, amen, amen. Yeah. Thank you, Sister Tucker. And is there another testimony? If not at this time, I'm just going to yield to um, Sister Simone. Yes, for our prior song. Song? Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's 567. Number 567 is our song, prior song. Good evening, everyone. Our prayer song is going to be 567, Have Thine Own Way. Have thine own way, Lord. Have 
have thine own way. Thou art the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will. While I am waiting, you did and still. says, have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. It is important, I believe, in these times to invite our Lord and Savior daily in our lives to have his own way. Surely we get up every day having plans, having aspirations, objectives, duties, chores, things that we seek to accomplish each day. But we should invite our Lord and Savior into our lives every single day asking him to have his own way. Sister White says that angels marvel at the fact that God's people do not pray enough. We are living in perilous times. Our Savior is soon to make his appearing. Yet we do not pray enough. It seems to suggest to me that perhaps God's church does not quite understand the times that we're living in. Paul said to the Philippians in chapter 4, verses, eight through, verses 6 through 7, he said to the Philippians, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known unto God. And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. We're living in perilous times. Paul did not stop there. He continued to say in his letter to the Thessalonians, rejoice evermore. Even in your difficult times, rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. In hardship, in death, in life, Elder Smith, give thanks, Paul says, for this is a will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. 
this is God's will concerning his people that we pray without ceasing and in all things give thanks I, I particularly like the way James Vaughan puts it he says hello old boy I need the prayers of those I love while traveling or over life's rugged way that I may true and faithful be and live for Jesus every day. He continued to say, I need the prayers of those I love to help me in each trying hour, to bear my tempted soul to him that he may keep me by his power. The refrain says, I want my friends to pray for me, to bear my tempted soul above, and intercede with God for me. I need the prayers of those I love. Who are those that we love? those individuals need your prayers your family members need your prayers your children your grandchildren your husbands your wives your co-workers the government needs your prayers at this time just before I pray, I would like to open the floor for two short prayers. James says, I, I want my friends to pray for me. If you feel so impressed this evening, God has been good to you. I invite you to share with us two quick short prayers two individuals. Anyone, I want my friends to pray for me. He continues to say, I want my friends to pray for me, to hold me up on wings of faith, that I may walk the narrow way and keep by our Father's glorious grace. I want my friends to pray for me, to bear my tempted soul above, and intercede with God for me. I need the prayers of those I love. At this time, let me invite you to bow your heads as we pray. Righteous, eternal God and our Heavenly Father, nothing in our hands we bring, but simply to Calvary's cross this evening we cling. We are grateful, O oh Lord, that there is still a God in heaven who hears our prayers. We are grateful that there is still a God in heaven that allows his children to live to see 102 years. We are grateful that we serve a God who even in 20 and 22 can deliver safely a baby girl. Certainly we serve a mighty God that even through sickness, persons can come back to full health. And so Lord, with thanksgiving in our hearts and with humility. 
we place before you those of whom we love. We place before you, O Lord, our friends, our families. We place before you this church, its leaders, its young people. We place before you the seniors of this church. We lift up before you, O Lord, uh, the government of this great country, knowing full well that it is only in you that we can put our trust. For at all times, man will fail, but we serve a God that never slumbers nor sleeps who is ever looking out for the affairs of his children. As we come before you, O oh Lord, we want to place before you the sins in our lives. Not knowing those, perhaps of our friends and our families, but we lift them up before you and we ask that you may remove the sins from their lives. We ask that you may consecrate us anew to you, O Lord. May we daily walk in newness of life. May we daily surrender our lives to you afresh. Knowing, O Lord, that you have done a mighty act on Calvary. May Jesus Christ be lifted up in our lives each and every day. At our schools, at our jobs. May Jesus Christ be high and lifted up even in our homes. Take charge of our lives, O oh Lord. As we go through these uh, perilous times of sickness, disease, death, wars and rumors of wars, protests, all over men's heart are failing them for fear as declared in your words but O oh lord we serve a mighty god and we indeed hold fast to your words in that you will never leave us nor forsake us even in these perilous times be with us O oh lord we pray save us into your kingdom may we daily walk with you in jesus name we pray amen and amen at this time i'd like to lift up before you the book of proverbs chapter 22 and verse 6. Proverbs 22 and verse 6 as we go into our scripture reading. Proverbs 22 verse 6. The Bible says in this one verse most profound. It says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. As we prepare ourselves for the spoken word, may God bless our hearts and may we be receptive to his word. Amen. Amen. As we prepare for a spoken word, as the elder has said, we're going to sing Praise Him. Praise him, Jesus, our blessed redeemer. 249, him 249. So those of you out there watching, get the family together. It's time to praise him with song. Amen. Amen. Praise him, praise him, Jesus, our blessed redeemer. Sing, O oh, earth, his wonderful love proclaim. Hail him, hail him. Highest archangels in glory, strength and honor, give to his holy name. Like a shepherd, 
Jesus will guard his children in his arms. He carries them all day long. Praise him, praise him, tell of his excellent greatness. Praise him, praise him, ever in joyful song. Praise him, praise him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. For our sins he suffered and bled and died. He our rock, our hope of eternal salvation. Hail him, hail him, Jesus the crucified. Sound the praises, Jesus who bore our sorrows. Love unbounded, wonderful, deep and strong. Praise him, praise him, tell of his excellent greatness. Praise him, praise him, ever in joyful song. Praise him, praise him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. Heavenly portals loud with hosannas ring. Jesus, Savior, reigneth forever and ever. Crown him, prophet and priest and king. Christ is coming over the world victorious. Power and glory unto the Lord belong. Praise him, praise him, tell of his excellent greatness. Praise him, praise him, ever in joyful song. Amen. Now we're going to turn to hymn 334, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. I think the older I get, the more this song becomes one of my favorites. Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, 334. <clears throat> Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, to my heart to sing thy grace streams of mercy never ceasing call for songs of loudest praise teach me ever to adore thee may i still thy goodness prove while the hope of Endless glory fills my heart with joy and love. Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help I've come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God. He to rescue me from danger, interposed his precious blood. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor, Daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind me closer, God, to thee. Prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, Lord, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. Amen. Well, happy Wednesday evening, everyone. I want to thank you all for stopping by. 
to our midweek prayer meeting service. As usual, I want to thank Pastor Steve for allowing me to stand in his, at his desk and speak a word to you. Tonight, I want to take you on a journey. The journey goes back to 1999, Sister Jokes. February 22nd, 1999, to be exact. Day after your birthday. The time was 0900 hours. And I had reported to the Hamilton Fire Station for my first day of recruit course. Excited and nervous all at the same time. I didn't know what to expect as a recruit firefighter. I had a general knowledge, as most people do, of what firefighters do. Someone calls 911, the truck responds, they get out, they spray a little water, the fire goes out, they pack up, they head back to the station until the next call, sort of like wash, rinse, and repeat. Truth be told, though, being a firefighter was never on my radar when I was a child, as most or many, many children actually aspire to be. It was never what I aspired growing up. But at the age of 25, Elder Smith, I was a young married man with a young child. And I simply was looking for job security and stability. Obviously, I didn't know what the job entailed. This was my first day on the job. But now I'm sitting in class, unequipped, but eager to learn. And over the next 26 weeks or so, I was flooded with basic firefighting skills and knowledge, which I am able to lean on during the course of my 23 years there. As the scripture reading was read previously, it says, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. But I like how the NIV says it. It says, start children off on the way they should go. And, when, and even when they are old, they will not turn from it. Tonight, I would like to leave you with what I call the three P's of parenting. They are plan, practice, and present. And if you don't know, our theme for the month is child guidance. So with that being said, I've entitled this message as the slide showed you, Recruit Class 2022. Let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I simply stand here as your vassal, your mouthpiece. I ask now that you speak. I ask that your people hear. I ask that your people will listen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So as I sat learning my lessons each day as a recruit firefighter, there was tons and tons of information I had to take in and commit to memory. For instance, water expands or turns to steam 1,700 to 1. This factors in when you're actually applying water to a fire. You put so much water on it, all that comes back to steam on you. So you have to be very mindful of how you apply this. Several other numbers and procedures and policies that I won't necessarily bore you with I had to plan on how I was going to get through the course and be a participant in the Passing Out Parade. Now, for those who don't know, the Passing Out Parade is a graduation, similar to students when they graduate from high school and college. That's our graduation. And I wanted to make sure that I was going to be there. Like a fresh recruiter off the streets, many people have no idea of parenting but enter into parenting without a plan. 
Now, it's often said that babies don't come with a manual. Well, that may be true, but it's not the truth. You see, God has indeed given us a manual. It's called the Bible. So let's dive in and have a look, shall we? And see what he, we have been entrusted to manage. As I say, I plan. We have to plan parenting. Now in Child Guidance, page 511, it says, Parents, if you would educate your children to serve God and do good in the world, make the Bible your textbook. It exposes the wiles of Satan. It is the great elevator of the race, the reprover and corrector of moral evils, the detector which enables us to distinguish between true and the false. She also goes on to say, whatever else is taught in the home or at school, the Bible as the great educator should stand first. Whatever else is taught at home or at school, the Bible should be first. If it is given this place, God is honored, and he will work for you in the conversion of your children. He also says, there is a rich mine of truth and beauty in this holy book, and parents have themselves to blame if they do not make it intensely interesting to their children. Also, okay, that might be it. I thought it was some more, <laughs> but that's it. So it's the parents, the parents, not the teachers, not the pastor, not the elders, the parents that are ultimately responsible. And when you do your part, God will do his. Amen? Amen? As the saying goes, those who fail to plan, plan to fail. Yeah? Now let's take a quick look at family worship. As you know, we all should be coming or having family worship in our homes. Yes? Amen. We should come together. Now, the ideal situation should be morning and night. Now we know how things may happen you may be rushing in the middle in the morning to get out the door, or you might be tired at night. So I would encourage us at least some part of the day. Pick one. Start with one. If you're not doing it now, start with one. If you are, great. If you could do it both morning and night, even better. Now, my favorite worship experience is Friday nights. And just to give you a little glimpse into my home, what we tend to do on Friday night, we will light a candle, right, to start the uh, our Sabbath hours. Once the Sabbath comes in, then each of us will pick a song to sing. No one gets out of it. Everybody has a part to play. Then we would watch a clip. We're using um, the Lineage series right now. We're on season two, and it actually tells you how the church began and the history of that. So we're using that. It's just little clips. But then also we do a testimony and we express what God has done to each of us during the course of the week. We pray, we hug, and that's it. So you don't want it to be a tedious process. Worship should be a fun time with God and with your family. Don't drag it out and make it laborious because children are going to tune out. So whatever the age is, make it age appropriate and do accordingly. We also recite two texts, two specific texts, Exodus 20, 8 through 11, yeah? And John 14, 1 to 6. So these are some of the tips. Now, you don't have to do it exactly how we do it, but have a plan. That's the point of it all, right? You have to have a plan to make it work. Now, Ephesians 5, 1 to 2 says, Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love, 
as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. So a question I ask you, what is your plan? Who are you following? Are you just going through the motions and expecting something to happen? Or are you being intentional on how you conduct family worship? Now, going back to the story of my recruits course, in order for me to ensure that I was successful, I had to plan my day, the nights, the weekends, and sometimes we even got together as a small group to have study, to get us through those real difficult subjects. According to Wikipedia, it says planning is deciding in advance what to do, how to do it, when to do it, and who should do it. Now, you all have homes, or we all have homes, or you stay in a house if, you, if you're not a homeowner. There are some who rent, amen? There's nothing wrong with that. But just think about it. A mason builds a house off of what? Oh, I think that's how it should be done. Yeah, that, that looks about right. Uh, or does he have a plan? This is a point that I'm trying to make. When it comes to our children, are we building them up with, from a plan? Or are we just expecting them to get Jesus? You have to be intentional, yes? Because without it, we just merge along through the day. Now, the world, they have a plan. They have a plan to give us temporary satisfaction. It's sort of like fool's goal. And King Solomon, I think he said it best, vanity, vanity, all is vanity. Without Christ, life is useless. Amen. Now, once you get this plan together, comes next is practicing. And as I can reflect back on my experience as a recruit, we had to understand certain equipment and how they functioned and how they operated. For instance, the breathing apparatus, or what we simply call a BA set. I had to practice putting it on, strapping it on, clicking in the belt, taking the mask, connecting it to the hose, turning on the valve, putting the mask on, pulling it tight, doing uh, uh, um, checks to make sure there was no air leaking, all of this, and I had to repeat it over and over and over. So much so I could do it with my eyes closed. And then there was a timer to see how long it took you. Because remember, when that bell goes off, you got to go. It's not about, oh, right, um, do I do this? For no, it's let's go. So the practicing over and over and over is very important. Well, in life, as parents, the same principles apply. Deuteronomy 6, verses 4 to 9 says, Listen, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. In verse 5, and you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and with all your strength. And you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commands that I am giving you today. Verse 7, repeat them again. And again, to your children, talk about them when they, you are at home and when you are on the road, when you are going to bed and when you are getting up. In verse 8, tie them to your hands and wear them on your foreheads as reminders. Write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Over and over we are to repeat. Tell the children the stories of God and what he has done in the times gone by, but even more so what he's done today. Amen. Over and when they get up, when they go to bed, when you're on the road, in the car, when they're at church, when you're at over a friend's house. It's repetitive. It's repetitive. That's what deepens depression. My, in my house, really quickly, we have uh, wall art, these stencils, yes? And as soon as you walk in the door, 
Joshua 24, 15. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You go in our living room. Uh, it's Psalms 46, 10. Be still and know that I am God. Down the hallway is Philippians 4, 13. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. In our bedroom is Isaiah 4, 41, 10. My wife's favorite text. Why should you be afraid? He's telling us. I'm your God. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So all throughout the house, there is constant bombardment of God. Amen. This is what he's trying to get us to say. Now, I'm not saying you have to do that as well, but just think about it. If we could put up pictures of whatever, if we could put up decorations of whatever, why can't we put up texts that remind us of what God has done for us? In Child Guidance, page 510, this is what Spirit of Prophecy has to say. As a people who have had great light, we are to be uplifting in our habits, in our words, in our domestic life and association. Give the word its honor position as a guide in the home. Let it be regarded as the counselor in every difficulty, the standard of practice. But there's more to it. She also says, every effort should be made by fathers and mothers to bring their own minds up from the lazy habit of regarding the service of God as a burden. Because remember, if you think it's a burden, our children are going to think it's a burden. You remember the commercial back in the 80s, and I know we all can remember the 80s. We're all, up, you know, we're, we're all that age out of that we can remember the 80s. But do you remember the commercial? The father, the, the little boy was in his bedroom, and his father walks in with a box, and he says, are these yours? And the son's like, no, it's not mine. He says, where did you learn this? He says, I've learned by watching you. And he was talking about cigarettes and drugs. Right? So if we don't do something, our children are more than likely are not going to do it. But if we do do something, our children will do it. So I just want to encourage us, do right. Do right by God, you know? My, my son, he, I, and I didn't tell him, my son, he's now, uh, uh, his favorite, one of his favorite artists is Fred Hammett, which happens to be my favorite ha um, artist, because we're constantly listening to it. So he'll be in the bathroom, and, and he's a pretty good singer in the bathroom, too, um, um, you know? And, and, now, and I'm, I'm hearing this music playing, I'm like, I didn't tell him, but he just goes ahead and does it. So again, Whatever we do, our children will follow. So I just want to encourage us, when it comes to doing right by our kids, do right. Amen. Just, to, just do right. And I would, uh, you, you, you sh had shared a story one time ago about um, uh, certain musics that you were listening to. And I'm not, I'm not talking out of school because Alder Smith has mentioned it before. You know, and he decided that he was going to get rid of his, some music collection. And his son, how old was he? Eight, nine years old, decided that, you know what? If dad is doing that, I'm going to give up some of my toys that weren't the best toy selection in his mind, all simply because of his father's um, example. So again, our children mimic us. Now, the greatest example is Jesus Christ. Amen. Luke 2, 41 to 49, and we're all familiar with this story. When Jesus, his parents had taken him to Jerusalem to, for the feast of the Passover. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. Verse 42, and when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. 
And when they had fulfilled the days, as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother knew it not. Now I could see Lisa and I are going to the feast. And Jacoby decides to stay behind. And we didn't know. But in verse 44 it says, But they supposing him to have been in the company when a day's journey, and they sought him among their kinfolk and acquaintance. And when they had found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. Verse 46, And it came to pass that after three days, you didn't see your child for three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. 48, and when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father, and I have sought thee sorrowing. Verse 49, and he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? So again, Jacob is missing, Elder. We thought he was with you. <coughs> and I said, at least you're seeing Kirby? No, it's, it's probably with Manny. Okay. Three days out. And we're like, uh, you seeing Kirby? No, have you seen? No. Oh, gosh. We got to go back. We got to start over. And where shall we find him? Sitting in church. Now, really quickly, because I know time's getting away from me. So, here it is. Now, I've been off the deck, what we call the deck. That's where, you, you know, you jump on the truck and go respond to calls. I haven't done that, what, for at least 14 years. But remember my basic training that I did back in the day, in 1999. I can still go down on the deck, pick up that BA set, put it back on my back, strap it on, hook up the hose to the mask, turn on the valve, put it on. I, I can do all of that. Why? Because I knew it from the beginning. The Bible says they were astonished at his understanding and answers. Well, truth be told, they shouldn't have been. Why? John 1, 1 tells us what? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In verse 14, it says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now let's go back to Luke 2, 49. Jesus, why are you looking for me? Did you know I would be about my father's business? In other words, the one place you should have looked for me was at church. I just went back home to daddy. I was with him in the beginning. I'm now with him. They were amazed. Why were they amazed? In the beginning was the word. The word became flesh. He was just practicing what he had been all this time. So you see, when we put in our children from the beginning, it plays out in the end. The scripture reading says, said what? Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart. Now, okay, you say, well, my child is not in church. Truth be told, what you taught them when they were young has not left them. It's no way it could leave them. Yes, they might not be doing what they ought to be doing necessarily, but I'm telling you, if you put it in, it has to stay there. It's the Word of God. And what you put in them will affect them. 
It pricks the conscience. Despite what they're showing you on the outside. So he executed. He presented. The third point. In child guidance, the last page I want to share with you. Child guidance, 513, 514. Mothers and fathers carry a what? Heavy responsibility in regard to their children. Those parents who believe and study the scriptures will realize that they must obey the commands of God, that they must not walk contrary to his holy law. Next slide, please. Those who allow anyone, even the minister, even Pastor Steve, even Elder Douglas, even Elder Smith, even Elder Stewart, it says to lead them to disregard the word of God must at the judgment meet the result of their course. You as a parent, if you let somebody influence your child in the wrong way and don't say anything to you, it's you that will be held in judgment. Parents are not to trust their own souls and the souls of their children to the minister, but to God, who's there, whose they are by creation and redemption. Last slide. Parents should search, scriptures, search the scriptures for themselves, for they have souls to save or to lose. They cannot afford to depend for salvation upon the minister. Amen. They must, they must, one more time, they must study the truth for themselves. Right now you think of the fire department. Like I said, I've been there 23 years. And when that alarm goes off and the call comes in, confirm structural fire, it is no time to second guess your training. It is simply time to execute. So now as parents, you have been given instruction. You have been given warning. There is no excuse. No excuse. If you take this message and do nothing with it, God is going to hold us accountable so in closing, we got a plan. Yes. Psalms 119.11 says what? Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. We got to practice. Psalms 119.105, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Psalms 119.105, 133, we got to present and execute. Order my steps in thy word, and let any iniquity have dominion over me. Yes, parenting is an awesome responsibility, but a very, very labor-intensive job. Though it may be a daunting task, God has provided us the assurance that he will never leave us or forsake us. Matter of fact, he's given us the answers to the open book test. All we got to do is simply turn the pages to find them. Plan, practice, present. So with that being said, who wants to be a part of Recruits Class 22? By a show of hands, anybody want to be a part of Recruits Class of 2022? 
All right, class dismissed. Amen, indeed. Thank you, Heather Hall Boyer, for the lesson and training of our children. Unfortunately, Sister Jalex has long passed that age. <laughs> I can help out with the grandchild, but that's about it. That's about it. I <laughs> right. So, praise God for the message, Heather. Great message, indeed. Let us stand for the benediction. Gracious God in heaven, we thank you so much for your word, for your manservant who delivered it with clarity and with power, made it plain. Yes. We pray, dear Father in heaven, that indeed we are possible, we will uh, bring up our children, our grandchildren, and those who haven't started it, Lord, they, cannot, they do not have an excuse. Bless us to this end, we pray, Lord, that we will be Limped in testimonies unto you, we ask in the precious and holy name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, have a blessed evening and enjoy the rest of the week. See you on Sabbath, God willing. Thank you.